We're ready now to move on to our next topic. Before we do that, let me remind you of what we've just finished. Uh, basically, we've now learned trigonometry for physics. We've learned the trigonometry that you need for physics, or most of the trigonometry. Uh, we've learned how to figure out things about two different types of triangles. We learned how to figure out things about triangles where you were given one side and one angle, and we also learned how to figure out things about triangles where you were given two sides. Well, um, before we move on to this next portion of the material, you need to have completely mastered the previous material. Complete mastery means that the previous material should have been boringly easy for you. So if there's anybody who thought that the previous portions of these videos were really boring, outstanding. They're intended to be boring. Um, you need to keep doing the videos over and over until they're boring. Um, otherwise, you don't really have mastery of the material. So if you did not find the previous videos boring, if you found that you were making some mistakes, even just careless mistakes, don't move on to the next section. Don't move on until you've mastered the previous material and, and you can get the problems right easily and confidently and without careless mistakes. Well, now let's move on uh, to our new material. Remember that we've discussed that one of the clever tricks that physicists have is that when they take overall vectors, they take the overall vectors and they break them down or resolve them into their components. We've seen, um, or I've briefly indicated, that it's a clever trick to take an overall vector and break it into components. Um, we can break them into any types of components that we want as long as they're perpendicular. Usually, we're going to use horizontal and vertical components. So we take the overall vector and we break them down into components. Remember the reason that's a good trick is that if you have a bunch of overall vectors, the overall vectors are probably not parallel to each other. If you have a bunch of overall vectors, the vectors are probably not parallel to each other. Some are pointing one way and some are pointing another way. They're not parallel to each other, but their components are going to be parallel to each other. All the horizontal components will obviously be parallel, or the anti-parallel, and all the vertical components will be parallel. Well, we know it's a lot easier to work with things that are parallel than things that are not. So if we break the overall vector into components, then we will have, it have a much easier time combining the components, because the components will all be parallel or anti-parallel to each other. At least all the horizontal components will be, and all the vertical components will be parallel or anti-parallel to each other in that group. Okay, uh, so now we're ready to start uh, learning the mechanics of that trick. How can we take an overall vector and break it down into components? That's what we're going to learn right now. Uh, and then after that, we're going to learn the opposite trick. If you know the components of a vector, it's important to be able to figure out what the overall vector is. If you know the components of the vector, you're supposed to know what the overall vector is. We can indicate that like this. So those are the two different types of problems that have to be boringly easy for you. It has to be very easy for you to take an overall vector and resolve it into components. And it has to be very easy for you to take the components and build up the overall vector. One job we have to do is taking the overall vector and figuring out the components. Another job is that if we're told what the components are, we should be able to figure out what the overall vector is. Those are the two things that we're going to proceed to learn now in this portion of the videos. And we're going to start first with this. We're going to start by learning how to take an overall vector and break it down into components. But don't forget that going the opposite direction is almost as useful. Um, it's also very important to know how to go from components to overall vector, but we have to start with something, so we're going to start with this. All right, so our goal now is to start learning how to break overall vectors into components. So here we have an overall vector, which we can call V, uh, and it has a length of 5. We won't worry about the units are, but of course, if this was velocity, it would be 5 meters per second. But for simplicity, I'm going to be leaving the units out. Um, and this is a vector that uh, you can see is at an angle of 53 degrees with the horizontal. This dashed line is just for reference to show where the angle is uh, uh, originating. All right, so now we need to break this vector into components. Well, the first step is to draw the components. How can we draw the components of a vector? Well, the trick is you have to draw a right triangle that uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse. We have to draw a right triangle that uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse. 
draw the components, you have to draw a right triangle that uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse. Um, also, uh, you can't really know what the components are unless you've chosen your axes. So I probably should have mentioned that uh, already. Uh, now, you can choose pretty much any axes you want, as long as they're perpendicular to each other, but you're usually, not always, usually going to work with horizontal and vertical axes. Uh, so let me uh, label uh, horizontal and vertical axes here. So these symbols here indicate um, that uh, our horizontal axis uh, is going to be called the x-axis, and our vertical axis is going to be called the y-axis. And these axes also indicate that we've chosen right and up as our positive directions. So this is a good notation to show that our um, positive x direction is to the right, and our positive y direction is up. So we now need to draw a right triangle uh, that uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse, and the legs of the triangle should be parallel to the axes. The legs of the triangle should be parallel to the axes. See if you can pause the video then and draw the components of this vector. You don't need to calculate them. Don't worry about calculating them, just draw the components. Did you give that a shot? Let's try to draw that right triangle. Here's the right triangle. Can you see that this is a right triangle that's using the overall vector as the hypotenuse? And the other criterion we need is that the legs should be parallel to the axes. Well, this leg is parallel to the x-axis and the vertical leg is parallel to the y-axis. So in order to draw the components, you have to draw a right triangle that uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse uh, and where um, each of the legs is parallel to one of the axes. Now the next step is that we have to draw in arrows that show the directions of the components. Uh, I hope you noticed that I already drew an arrow on uh, the overall vector. Did you see I drew an arrow showing that the overall vector was pointing to the north and east? Here's this arrow showing the overall vector is pointing north and east. Uh, maybe you remember that uh, a vector is something that has a direction. There's no such thing as a vector without a direction. So we need an arrow to show the direction. Well, the components should also have directions. So we're not done unless we use arrows for those two. So how about this horizontal x component? Um, what direction is that pointing in, left or right? Well, what direction is the overall vector pointing in? Is the overall vector pointing left or right? Well, I think you can see the overall vector is pointing to the right. It's not pointing straight to the right, but it's certainly not pointing left, correct? So the x component should also be pointing to the right. So we'll draw this as our x component pointing to the right. And how about the y component? Is that pointing up or down? Well, which way is the overall vector pointing? Can you see that the overall vector is pointing up? Not straight up, but kind of up. It's definitely not pointing down. So our y component here should also be pointing up. So we need an arrowhead to indicate that the y component is pointing up. Uh, another way to see that is you can just kind of see that the overall vector here is pointing up and to the right. This overall vector is pointing up and to the right. So the horizontal component is pointing to the right, and the vertical component is pointing up. Now let's label these sums a little bit. Um, a, natural no a natural notation for this side would be v sub x. v with a little x subscript. A subscript is a little variable that you put um, down and to the right of the main variable. So this is pronounced v sub x. And then how should we label this vertical line? v sub y, uh, because this is a subscript next to the y, because this uh, edge is parallel to the y-axis. Here's another way of writing that that's big enough that you can see. So notice, we don't just write it like this. This is not a subscript. A subscript is not the same size as the original variable. A subscript is smaller than the original variable and set down a little bit to it. It's uh, set down a little bit into its right. So try to draw good, accurate subscripts.
I might be surprised to hear that one of the keys to success in physics class is being careful about drawing good, clear subscripts. So let's start getting into the habit of drawing good, clear subscripts uh, from the very beginning of the course. Try to draw your subscripts the way I'm drawing them on the board, basically. As usual, it's always a good idea to, note, uh, to imitate in your own work the notation that I'm using on the board. Everything I'm doing on the board is what I suggest you should imitate in your own work, at least until these problems have gotten a lot easier for you. 